What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we've got Hamzat on the UFC 272 main event, Benil Dariush on the rescheduled fight against Islam Makachev, and much more. Nothing impressive about the UFC 272 main event, says Hamzat Shemaev. The highly anticipated Jorge Masvidal, Colby Covington matchup firmly had the eyes of the world on them. In the end, Covington came out on top using his dominant wrestling, wearing out Masvidal and keeping him in check throughout the bout. Both fighters were one-time best friends and have even fought for the welterweight title twice and lost both of their title challenges. This one was thought to be a potential fight of the year contender in the making, but it was not to be. Colby outworked Masvidal for most of the fight and dominated him on the ground to the point where Masvidal simply didn't have the gas tank or an answer to anything that Colby was throwing at him. Despite a few times in which he clearly got the better of the striking exchanges, Masvidal just plainly did not have enough to stop Colby's wrestling. One guy who was watching intently, with aspirations of fighting anyone and everyone, is Hamza Chimaev. The UFC's most hyped prospect in a while is gearing up to fight Gilbert Burns at UFC 273 this coming April, a fight that will no doubt have so many people excited, given how dominant Hanzat has been in the cage. He's 10-0, undefeated, and has finished all of his opponents inside of two rounds. This is why Hamzat believes he's already a contender for the welterweight title, and let it be known on Twitter that he wasn't pleased with the main event scrap between Miles Vidal and Covington. This is what he posted online. Bull fight. Hamzat had previously stated that he wanted to fight the winner of this bout, but it remains to be seen what happens from here. What do you make of Hamzat's statement here concerning the UFC 272 main event? Benil Dariush sidesteps possible surgery, talks about a fight against Islam Makachev. The Benil Dariush Islam Makachev fight is back on after several announcements over the past few days, namely that Dariush's injury isn't as bad as initially thought. Dariush, who injured his leg while training to fight Islam Makachev in the number one contender's fight for the lightweight title, had to pull out of the fight that was scheduled just a week ago. In Dariush's place was Bobby Green, a longtime UFC veteran who raised his hand with just 10 days to go to take on one of the toughest fighters on the planet in Makachev. After Islam defeated Green in impressive fashion last weekend in the first round by a grounded pound, he was said to be the number one contender. But in a day since, Dariush got word from his doctors that he could use physical therapy and, if he's smart, skip surgery altogether to bring enough strength back in his ankle. This coupled with the fact that the UFC is looking at setting up a potential route for Conor McGregor to get to the title prompted the UFC to reschedule the Dariush vs. Islam fight. This is how Dariush described his reaction when he first heard the news during an interview with Brett Okamoto of ESPN. Thank God, man, we, uh, we're we going to get rescheduled. I mean, I feel bad for Islam. I'm sure he's not very happy about the situation, but, you know, this is this is the ideal situation for me where I get this book, uh, fight rebooked. I'd like to have another 10 weeks for this camp if possible. If it's shorter, then it's shorter. But uh, June, July, those those are good dates. With Dariush now getting a second chance to fight Islam, the number one contendership is now, once again, up for grabs. What do you think about these latest developments, and who do you have winning this one? Don't forget to take a second to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all of the latest fight news. Chael Sonnen says the Conor McGregor vs. Floyd Mayweather boxing fight had lied about their numbers. The massive crossover sporting event that was Floyd Mayweather vs. Conor McGregor sure lit the world on fire. Or did it? The fight was grounded by a promotional world tour that got Conor in front of millions around the world, and Mayweather showed his promotional muscle as well, as the fight truly became a spectacle. But if you ask Chael Sonnen, who says that he was at the event, it didn't even sell out the venue, despite all the pomp and circumstance of that fight. In a recent video on his YouTube channel, Chael spoke at length about the potential for a Tyson Fury-Francis Ngannou fight. Given that Tyson Fury announced that he planned to retire from boxing after he defends his W. BC heavyweight title against Dillian White in April. In comparing how that fight will do, he spoke at length about the floyd Connor fight and said that if this fight didn't sell out the arena, then what makes you think Nganu Fury would? This is what Sonnen actually said. They also don't know the numbers of McGregor versus Floyd. I have never with my own eyes witnessed a sporting event lied about more than the level of business that was McGregor versus Floyd. I was at the venue, personally. It did not sell out. I got my mother's ticket the day of the fight. It wasn't sold out, guys. That's the truth that nobody wants to talk about. 
Ultimately, if Fury were to fight Francis Ngannou, it wouldn't happen until next year. Even if Fury does retire from professional boxing after this April fight, he had stated already that he'd be open to fighting Ngannou with the small 4-ounce MMA gloves sometime in early 2023. But what do you think about Sonnen's statements here concerning Floyd and Connor? UFC's Denis Bondar of the Ukraine loses his home. UFC flyweight Denis Bondar has reportedly lost not only his home in the Ukraine, but also his current gym, Kharkov Top Team, as it was destroyed in recent bombings by the Russian military. Thankfully, Bondar and his family were not injured in any of the reported attacks these past two weeks in the country. The war in Ukraine has taken a massive toll on fighters for not just Ukraine but also Russia. This latest report about Bondar's home and gym is devastating. He's had an incredible career so far, having gone 14-2 and two before entering the UFC on an 8-fight winning streak. Bondar lost his UFC debut back this past February in the Sean Strickland-Jack Hermanson undercard and will no doubt be looking to bounce back in his next outing in the UFC. What are your thoughts on Bondar having lost his home and gym in the Ukraine? Derek Brunson pays out $10,000 donation for Cain Velasquez's legal fees. The saga of former UFC heavyweight champion Cain Velasquez hit the MMA world like a Mack truck this week after reports surfaced on Tuesday that the MMA legend was arrested on charges of attempted murder. Velasquez was involved in a shooting in which police say he had followed a vehicle carrying a man charged with sexually assaulting a relative of the former MMA superstar, a minor under the age of 14 years old, as many as 100 times at a daycare facility. The man in question, 40-year-old Harry Goularte, was arrested over a week ago at his mother's home in San Martin, California on charges of child molestation. He was later granted supervised release against prosecutors' wishes. Then, on Monday, Reports came out that Velasquez had allegedly shot at a vehicle in which Gularte was inside. He missed and hit his stepfather who was driving, and now he's recovering from non-life-threatening injuries. Velasquez was arrested for attempted murder and has been in Santa Clara County Jail ever since. The MMA world has come out in full support of Kane over what transpired, especially current UFC middleweight contender Derek Brunson. Brunson has begun to sell t-shirts online that say, free Kane Velasquez, with all proceeds to go towards Kane's legal fees. And in just two days, he's reported that the store has raised about 10,000 US dollars. In a tweet, Brunson posted a photo of a giant check of the donation made out to Kane Velasquez, with a caption that read, as a father, I feel you Kane, the MMA community got your back. 10K in two and a half days sent to his wife. At Kane MMA, hashtag free Kane Velasquez. Over the past few days, Ronda Rousey, Angela Hill, Derek Brunson, and so many other MMA fighters across the MMA world have posted messages of support for Kane. What are your thoughts on Brunson's actions to help Kane Velasquez? Today's video was packed with some juicy stories from the fight world. What are your thoughts about what's going on in MMA? Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel to see more videos just like this. See you next time.